Capital One is a leading financial services company in the United States, known for its credit cards, banking products, and digital banking solutions. As a company, Capital One emphasizes innovation, customer centricity, and technology-driven approach. Typical job responsibilities at Capital One can vary widely based on the role, ranging from data analysis, software development, and risk management to customer service, marketing, and finance-related functions. Candidates looking to be employed with Capital One should possess a combination of technical skills depending upon the role, analytical abilities, problem-solving abilities, and a strong focus on delivering excellent customer services. Capital One typically provides a comprehensive benefits package that includes health and wellness benefits, retirement plans, paid time off, flexible work arrangements, and opportunities for career growth and development. Additionally, employees at Capital One often enjoy perks like discounted banking and financial products, as well as various employee resources groups and support networks to foster a diverse and inclusive work environment. This is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I'll share with you how to pass an assessment test and get you hired for your dream job. When companies are hiring, very frequently, HR and hiring managers would like to test the candidate to make sure candidate possesses the skills and knowledge that will make him successful in the job. To determine the answer, employers use a computerized assessment tests to assess candidate skills and experience relevant to the job. Assessment tests are also helpful to determine candidate's potential and make sure a new hire makes the right decisions on the job. Most of the test consists of multiple choice questions, where you as a candidate are presented with the question and you need to find and select the answer based on the choices presented. Typical assessment test consists of multiple questions and most of the times test is timed, which means that you need to complete the test within predefined time frame. There are different types of questions used to assess the candidate skills based on the position you applied for. In this video, I'll share with you sample mechanical aptitude test questions, engineering test questions, cognitive abilities test, verbal reasoning, personality, work simulation, leadership, and a lot of other types of questions we frequently see on the test. In this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared for an assessment test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end and if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent questions for the assessment, please make sure to follow the link in the description and in comments of this video. And now, let's go ahead and get started so we can get you prepared. In this section, we will look at the work simulation test, which is used to evaluate candidates' ability to perform tasks and skills required for the job. The questions on this type of test typically involve simulated scenarios and tasks that are similar to what the candidate would encounter on the job, such as data analysis, customer service, and problem solving. Let's look at some sample work simulation assessment test questions to get you ready. Here's a very interesting question to determine how well you can work with others. You need to determine what is the best way to schedule a meeting with the client who is based in a different time zone and has limited availability. You need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A. Schedule the meeting without considering the client's time zone. Choice B. Email the client with several date and time options without specifying the time zone. Choice C. Check the client's time zone and suggest several date and time options that work for both the client and your manager. And last but not least, choice D, schedule the meeting during your manager's preferred time slot without considering the client's availability or time zone. Take a close look to see if you can select the right answer. And I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice C. Option C is the best choice because it takes into consideration the client's availability and time zone. There are two stakeholders in this action, your manager and your client. And you need to check the time zone and suggest several date and time options that work for both the client and your manager. This will ensure that the meeting is scheduled at a convenient time for both parties and this minimizes the risk of confusion and miscommunication. Let's also look at other options to determine why they might be incorrect. 
Let's look at option A. It is wrong because it ignores the client's time zone, which will lead to scheduling conflicts. Option B is also incorrect because it does not specify the time zone, which can cause confusion and miscommunication. And last but not least, option D is incorrect as well because it disregards the client's availability and time zone, which can lead to scheduling conflicts and damage the company's reputation. When you solved this challenge on your own, did you come up with a different answer? If this is the case, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Very frequently on the test, companies look at your customer service skills. This is one of these types of questions. You work as a CSR and need to help troubleshoot internet connectivity. What is the best approach to troubleshoot slow internet speeds for a customer? You're presented with four choices and you need to select one. Choice A, ask the customer to restart their modem and transfer to technical support if issue persists. Choice B, ask the customer to restart their computer and transfer to technical support if issue persists. Choice C, ask the customer to check their internet connection and transfer to technical support if the issue persists. And last but not least, choice D, walk the customer through the thorough troubleshooting process, including resetting the modem and computer, checking cables and connections, and testing the internet speeds. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. If you need to pause this video, feel free to do this to reread the answers and select the correct one. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it or have a different important considerations, please make sure to bring them up in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice D. To remind you, in choice D, you would need to walk the customer through a thorough troubleshooting process, including resetting the modem and computer, checking cables and connections, and testing the internet speeds. Only this approach shows your commitment to providing excellent customer service and may even resolve the issue without need for technical support transfer. One important thing to note, the original question is kind of convoluted and it uses the acronyms. Just to clarify for you, CSR stands for Customer Service Representative. And now let's look at the incorrect choices, choices A, B, and C to see why they are incorrect. I think those options are incorrect because they only involve asking the customer to perform a single action and then transferring them to technical support. This approach may not resolve the issue and it may result in the customer having to wait longer for the resolution. Did you come up with the different answer? If you did, please make sure to post your answer, considerations, and thought process in comments. Here's a very interesting question on how to provide recommendation to your manager for the new product line. Your manager wants you to provide a recommendation on whether to continue investing in the new product line based on your analysis of the sales data. What is the best approach to analyze the sales data and provide the recommendation? You're presented with four different choices. Let's look at each one of them. Choice A, conduct a simple analysis of the sales data and provide recommendation based on initial findings. Choice B, conduct a comprehensive analysis of the sales data, including market trends and competitor data. Provide a recommendation based on your findings. Choice C, provide a recommendation based on personal opinion and expertise without conducting any analysis of the sales data. And last but not least, choice D, provide a recommendation based on the sales data from a similar product line without analyzing the sales data for the new product line. Take a close look to see if you can select the correct answer. Are you ready? Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think the correct answer here is choice B. In choice B, you need to conduct a comprehensive analysis of the sales data, including market trends and competitor data. Provide a recommendation based on your findings. I think this choice is correct because it allows you to provide a thorough understanding of the sales data, ensuring more accurate and informed recommendation. Conducting a comprehensive analysis of the sales data is essential in making an informed decision for your manager. Let's also look at the incorrect choices to determine why they are incorrect. Option A is too simplistic and can get the result in an incomplete assessment of the sales data. Option C is unreliable and can be seen as unprofessional since it's based on personal opinion and experience without any supporting data. And last but not least, choice D is not recommended since it involves using sales data from a similar product line, which may not be relevant to the new product line. Was your answer different? If it was, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. 
In this section, we will look at the sample questions for cognitive test, which represents an assessment used by employers to evaluate candidates' mental abilities, such as problem solving, critical thinking, and memory. The questions in the test can vary, but typically involve math problems, logic puzzles, spatial reasoning, and verbal comprehension. Let's look at some sample cognitive assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Which was initially designed to test your spatial reasoning, but also could be used to test your cognitive abilities and analytical skills. You're presented with four shapes, and you need to find the square which fits all the shapes across the borderlines. You need to select one square out of four possible choices based on the borderlines presented. Choices are A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can identify the item. Seems challenging, don't you think so? Let me give you a hint. Try to see if you need to rotate the shapes or do any other manipulations with the shapes before trying to fit them. Are you ready now? Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Not sure about you, but I was able to solve this challenge in three simple steps. In step one, you need to assign the numbers. In step two, you need to rotate the shapes to position them to fit. And in the last step three, you need to try all the options to find the square which fits all the shapes across the separator lines. Let's look at the example. Let's first assign each shape a number. Because we have four shapes, the numbers will be one, two, three, and four. The second step is the hardest. In this step, you need to rotate the shapes to position them to fit and you need to find the closest square which fits all the shapes. Let's rotate each shape to get them into the correct position. Let's rotate shape 1, now shape 2, now shape 3, and now shape 4. You need to watch out because rotation could be in the different directions, as it happens in this question as well. And once you have all the shapes rotated correctly, we need to move to step 3, where we will try all the options to find the square which fits all the shapes. Square A is not going to fit them because there are five shapes based on the borderlines. Square C also is not going to fit them. Same with square D. So the only correct answer here is choice B. Did you get to the same conclusion? Or maybe you found a better way to solve it? Please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question to validate your analytical skills and spatial reasoning. You're presented with the square, which is broken down into four parts. Three parts are filled with different shapes, and fourth part is missing. You need to determine which choice would create the most symmetrical large square. And you need to select this choice out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can meet the condition and select the right shape. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, let's better understand what we're dealing with. We have five types of shapes. We have L-shape, we have a semicircle, we have a semi-diamond, semi-heart, and rectangle. Each one of the shapes is located in a small square, and each one of the shapes has one, two, or three dots inside of it. Now, large square is broken into four small squares. Let's give each one of the small squares an ID. We'll call them area one, area 2, area 3, and then comes the missing area, which we need to fill would be area 4. If we go back to the original question, our goal is to identify which choice would create the most symmetrical large square. Let's look closely at what most symmetrical might mean. Let's draw a horizontal symmetrical line and let's draw a vertical symmetrical line to help us define the symmetry in the large square. Let's look at the easiest symmetrical objects we can identify. For example, between area 1 and area 2, we can build the full yellow diamond. And to do this, we will use the two half diamond objects with one dot. Between area 2 and area 3, we can build a full heart using the semi hearts and one dot on each side. The choice that we would need to select would help us build the circle between areas 1 and 4, and the circle would be green and will have one dot and the correct choice will also help us build the symmetrical L-shaped object between areas 3 and 4, which will have two dots. Two choices match both of these criteria, and these choices are A and B. 
Which one do you think we should select? Let's look closely to see if we can determine some additional patterns. For example, across horizontal line, if we look, there is a red L shape and blue L shape. So the key here is L shape. It's on the both sides of the horizontal symmetrical line. Same thing with green triangle in area 3. And potentially we would need to have yellow triangle or triangle of other color in the area 4. We can also see the symmetry diagonally across the horizontal symmetrical line. For example, a red L shape in area 1 has two dots and green triangle in area 3 has two dots as well. Which means that the missing object should have three dots symmetrical to the blue L shape. So the triangle in area 4 will need to have three dots. Very similar symmetry exists between rectangle in area 2 and area 4. It should be a rectangle in area 4 and rectangle should have three dots as well. Based on all of this analysis, I think the correct choice here is choice A. Did you detect any other symmetries or did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your version, answer and solution in comments. I enjoy solving pattern questions because they're so easy to understand, but sometimes not so easy to solve. We are presented with the sequence of numbers and we need to find the missing number, which is the next in the sequence. The numbers are 25, 20, 16, 13, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to calculate the missing number out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Choice A is 8, choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 9. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations and come up with the solution for the missing number. It looks confusing, isn't it? But believe me, there is a hope at the end of the tunnel. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here we have a concept of decrement. And the pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number minus decrement. And decrement increases by 1 with each number in the sequence. Let's take a close look. Our first number in the sequence is 25. And our first initial decrement is minus 5. 25 minus 5 equals 20. And this is how we come to the second number. Then we decrease decrement by 1, and the decrement becomes minus 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. 16 minus 3 equals 13. 13 minus 2 equals 11. And 11 minus 1 equals 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 10. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments then, so we can all learn. Here's the very interesting question which tests your ability to find solutions to unusual problems. You're presented with four expressions. And in fourth expression, the result of the expression is missing. Let's look at each expression closely. The first expression is 4 plus 2 equals 26. Something's definitely going on with this expression here. Second one is 8 plus 1 equals 17 height. Same thing here. And the third one is 6 plus 5 equals 111. In fourth expression, 7 plus 3, you need to find the result, which is presented as the missing number represented by question mark. And you have four choices to select from. Choice A, 608. Choice B, 410. Choice C, 290. And last but not least, choice D, 375. Take a close look to this unusual set of expressions to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Let me give you a quick hint. What if you introduce into this set of expressions not just the plus sign, but also a minus sign? Would that make any difference? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have figured out, we are not dealing with typical math expressions here. Because the pattern here is that the last two digits are calculated based on the two expressions, subtraction and addition. Let's look at the example. The first expression is presented to us as 4 plus 2 equals 26. But numbers in 26 are calculated differently. For example, first number 2 is calculated as 4 minus 2. This is where I give you a hint of using not just the plus sign, but also look at the minus sign. And the second digit in 26, which is 6, is calculated as 4 plus 2 equals 6. Now let's look at the second expression. 
second expression's result is calculated as 8 minus 1 equals 7, and then 8 plus 1 equals 9. The third expression is 6 minus 5 is 1, and 6 plus 5 is 11. That's where we get a three-digit number, 111. And now we can calculate the final fourth expression, which is calculated as 7 minus 3, so the first digit would be 4. And then we calculate it as 7 plus 3, which would be 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 410. Did you figure it out? Or did you find a different solution? Please make sure to share your solution and rationale in comments. You will enjoy this question because it tests your logical thinking and analytical skills. You are presented with the dart in the exact middle of the dartboard. Dart has numbers on top of the ribbon and at the end of the ribbon. The numbers on the ribbon are 13, 18, 41, 128, and 517. Numbers at the end of the ribbon are 18, 41, 128, 517, and then comes the missing number you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choices A, 1921, choice B, 2029, choice C, 2359, and last but not least, choice D, 2590. Give yourself a moment, maybe pause this video to see if you can calculate the answer. Are you ready? Let's move forward so I can share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. First, to answer this question, let's understand what we're dealing with. Since this game may not be very familiar in all the parts of the world, let's start with the definition. Darts is the competitive sport in which players throw small sharp-pointed missiles, known as darts, at the round target known as dartboard. Now, let's look closely at the dart we're dealing with. Our dart is unique because it has ribbons. There is a number on the ribbon and there is a calculated number at the end of the ribbon. To complete the calculations, let's assign each ribbon unique number. We're dealing with ribbons 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And as you might have already figured out, the number at the end of the ribbon is calculated based on the sequence ID and number on top of the ribbon itself. The formula to do the calculations is that the end of the ribbon number is calculated as number on top of the ribbon multiplied by sequence ID plus 5. Let's look at the example. The first blue ribbon has the sequence number 1, so that the end of the ribbon number is calculated as 13 multiplied by 1 plus 5, which would be equals 18. The second ribbon number is calculated as 18 multiplied by 2 plus 5 equals 41. The third ribbon number is calculated as 41 multiplied by 3 plus 5 equals 128. And the fourth ribbon number is calculated as 128 multiplied by 4 plus 5 equals 517. Now we know how to calculate the missing number. The missing number is calculated as 517 multiplied by 5 plus 5, which would be equal to 2590. So the correct answer here is choice D. 2590. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. And now I have a practice question for you. Here I'm not going to reveal the solution, but instead I'm going to ask you to solve the challenge and post your answer in the comments so I can give you my feedback. In this question, you're presented with the scale, which consists of multiple shapes. Scale remains in balance and you need to calculate the missing value of the diamond as well as the total sum. Once you're done with your analysis and calculations, you need to select your answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 18 and 96. Choice B, 12 and 88. Choice C, 20 and 92. And last but not least, choice D, 19 and 94. Do you have your answer? Please make sure to post your answer, solution and rationale in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck solving the challenge. Here's an amazing question to test your spatial reasoning. You're presented with the three-dimensional view and you need to select view from the opposite side out of four possible choices. The choices are A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can select the right solution. Please look closely as it may not be as easy as it seems. Are you ready? Because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, obviously please make sure to post in comments. 
If your answer to this question was choice C, you answered it correctly. There are four objects on the original three-dimensional image. We have a duck, we have a basketball, we have a smartphone, and we have a hammer, which is barely noticeable on the original picture. And the easiest way to solve this challenge is to select one object and track it on the opposite side. I selected a duck, but you can as well select a hammer or a smartphone. It is a little bit harder with the ball because it's in the middle and it's a symmetrical object. So let's go back to the duck. If you look at the original image, you see that the duck is looking to the left and it is on the left side of the ball, which means that if we look from the opposite side, the duck will be looking to the right and would be on the right side of the ball. We frequently see these types of questions on the test, so to help you solve these types of challenges, here are the views of these objects from a different sides. Take a look at these objects from the right, from the left side, and take a look at this set of objects when duck and the ball have changed the position. I wanted to ask you, did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments, as well as you can supplement it with some tips on how to solve these types of challenges. Have you ever dealt with the money tree? Well, now it's your opportunity. And it's your opportunity to check your attention to details. You're presented with the money tree making enterprise. And you need to calculate the total value of money that you see in the picture. What's interesting here is that each coin is one cent. And each bill equals one dollar. You need to identify all coins and all bills and count the total value. Once you complete the calculations, please select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, $10.18. Choice B, $12.09. Choice C, $15.15. And last but not least, choice D, $18.07. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations. I think the correct answer here is choice A, $10.18. And here's why. I counted $10 in the picture. Let's start with the top of the money tree. One, two, three, four. And then on the right, we see another group of the dollar bills. There are five dollars there. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. And then we see the hard to notice dollar bill on the top of the flower pot. Now let's count the coins. We see nine coins to the right of the flower pot. Then we see eight coins coming out of the watering can. And then there is one coin on top of the watering can, which is easy to miss. Did you get to the same answer? Choice A, $10.18. If you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and whatever other coins or dollar bills I missed in comments. This is one of my favorite questions just because it's so unusual. But the answer here is very simple. You're presented with the set of eight circles. Six of the circles are visible, and you need to select two missing ones. You have four different choices to find the missing circles. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To answer this question, we need to detect the pattern. And the pattern here is very simple. Each circle is broken down into sections with darker sections and lighter sections. And if you look closely, you will see that all circles are grouped in pairs. And the pattern is hidden in the sequence for circle pairs, with each subsequent pair being similar to the previous one. Let's take a close look. To better understand the pattern, let's give each circle a unique number. If we start with the top row of circles, the numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and the bottom row of circles will have numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8, with 7 and 8 being our missing pair. If you look closely at the circle 1, you will see that there is a dark section at the 2 o'clock, and circle 2 has two dark sections, one at noon and another one is at 2 o'clock. Similar pattern you see in circles 3 and 4, and then circles 5 and 6 also mimic the same pattern. Looking at possible answers, you see the choices A, B, C do not meet this pattern, 
and the only right answer that fits the pattern is choice D. Hopefully you've got to the same conclusion, and if you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. In this section, we will look at the sample questions for verbal reasoning test for employment, which typically represents an assessment used by employers to measure candidates' ability to comprehend and analyze written information. The questions typically involve reading passages, answering questions based on the information presented, as well as identifying relationships between words and understanding the vocabulary. Let's look at some sample questions that you typically see on the test to make sure you get ready. Here's an amazing question which tests your logical reasoning and verbal reasoning skills. You're presented with three verbal statements, and you need to determine if the final statement is true. The first statement is, most small businesses are family-owned. The second statement is, most family-owned businesses are profitable. And the last statement, most small businesses are profitable. Is this statement true? You need to select out of three possible choices. Choice A, yes. Choice B, no. And last but not least, choice C is uncertain. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Because on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is A, yes. Which means that most small businesses are profitable. And this is the accurate statement. Which means that the statement, most small businesses are profitable, is true. Let me explain you why. If most small businesses are family-owned, and most family-owned businesses are profitable, then it stands to reason that most small businesses are also profitable. What's interesting to note about this question is that answer C, uncertain, might also be accurate, and some test systems might be configured to accept it as the accurate answer. And the main reason is that the relationship between the statements are unclear, or if there's insufficient information to make logical conclusions, you can answer uncertain. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. I love this question because the answer represents such a powerful business concept. You're presented with 10 letters and you need to build English business word by using each letter only once. The letters are N, I, N, A, V, O, N, I, T, O. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to the process of introducing new ideas, products, services, or processes that add value to society, the economy, or organizations. Did you figure it out? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, as usual, please make sure to post in comments. My answer is innovation, and the word is spelled as I-N-N-O-V-A T-I-O-N. What's interesting is that innovation involves combining creativity, technology, and practicality to develop new solutions that meet people's needs and address emerging challenges. Innovation is also crucial for the growth and development of the businesses, economies, and societies, and it drives competitiveness, productivity, and progress. Let's look at the examples of the most recent consumer innovations. Number one is streaming services. The popularity of streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu and Disney Plus disrupted the traditional TV industry by offering on-demand access to the vast library of movies and TV shows. The fact that I can broadcast my videos and share them with you directly is also part of streaming services innovation. The next one on my list is electric cars. The development of electric cars by companies such as Tesla, Nissan and Chevrolet has provided consumers with a more sustainable and energy-efficient alternative to traditional gasoline-powered vehicles. Another example of recent innovation is wearable technology. The emergence of wearable technologies such as smartwatches, fitness trackers, and virtual reality headsets had powered people to track their health and fitness, stay connected, and experience immersive digital content. We also recently enjoyed innovation of online marketplaces. Companies such as Amazon, eBay, and Etsy revolutionized the way people shop by providing them with vast selection of products, competitive prices, and fast delivery options. And last but not least on my list 
is the smart home technology. The rise of smart home technology allowed people to control and automate various aspects of their homes from lightning and temperature to security and entertainment using voice commands and mobile apps. Do you know any other examples of recent innovations? Please make sure to share them in comments so we can all learn. A very interesting question for you to try your skills. You're presented with nine letters of the English alphabet and you need to build English business word. The letters are O-L-S-U-O-T-I-N-S. Take a close look to see if you can construct English business word. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to a set of products, services, and strategies that are designed to solve specific business problems and meet the needs of organizations. Did you figure it out? The answer is solutions. Business solutions are typically developed by vendors or service providers who have expertise in particular industry or functional area. The word is spelled as S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S. And the goal of business solutions is to help organizations improve their efficiency, productivity, profitability, and overall performance by addressing specific challenges or opportunities in a strategic and effective manner. Can you come up with any other words using the same letters only once? If you did, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Very frequently, you might be presented with the question where you need to determine the relationship. This is one of these types of questions. You need to determine if CEO is to the company as choice A. Quarterback is to football. Choice B. Director is to a movie. Choice C. Conductor is to orchestra. Choice D, pilot is to plane, or choice E, chef is to restaurant. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right relationship. This is not an easy question, but keep in mind that you have a choice of pausing this video and maybe thinking about it for 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let me share with you my version of the answer, and obviously if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To understand the answer to this question, we need to understand who the CEO is. And the CEO, which stands for Chief Executive Officer, is responsible for making strategic decisions and overseeing the overall operations for the company. Knowing this information, let's build an analogy. CEO is to a company, is as a leader to the organization. In the next step, let's look at the choices we're presented with and build similar analogies. For example, quarterback is to football, is as a leader to the type of the sport. Choice B, director is to a movie, is as a leader to the final product of work. Choice C, conductor is to orchestra, is as a leader to the team. Choice D, pilot is to a plane, is similar to the leader of the machine. And last but not least, choice E, chef to the restaurant, is as a leader to the organization. As you can see, by eliminating the options that do not maintain the relationship we found the correct pair of words that represent the correct analogy. Based on this information, the correct answer here is choice E. Chef is to restaurant. Did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your answer, solution and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your English business vocabulary. You need to build English business word using all the letters presented on the screen. And you only need to use each letter once. The letters are G-O-I-S-L-T-I-C-S. -S. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Because I want you to succeed so much, I'm going to give you a quick hint. The word represents the process of planning, implementing, and controlling the movements of storage of goods or materials from the point of origin to the point of consumption. Did you figure it out? I'm going to move forward and share with you my version of the answer. But if you have a better way or alternative way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The answer is logistics. The word is spelled as L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C-S. To get better at solving these types of challenges, try to visualize the word and try different combinations. For example, if you look at original nine letters, you will see that if we start from the middle, you can start building the word L-O-G and then you build the remainder of the word to get to the correct answer. 
Do you have any other tips, tricks, or techniques that can help you solve these types of challenges? Please make sure to post them in comments. In this section, we will look at the personality assessment test questions. A personality assessment test is a type of psychological evaluation used during the hiring process to assess candidates' personality traits, behavioral tendencies, and work-related preferences. This test aims to provide insights on how a candidate might behave, interact with others, and fit into the company's culture. The typical purpose of personality assessment is to gauge a candidate's suitability for a particular job or work environment based on their personality traits. Personality assessment test helps employers to identify individuals who possess the desired characteristics and align with the organizational values. Let's look at some sample personality assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Here's a very interesting question which you cannot just answer because you need a strategy and approach on how to answer. You need to select from two statements, one that best describes you and one that describes you the least. And your choices for selections are Choice A. I should have all the information before making a decision. Choice B. I easily communicate with people. Choice C. I like to take responsibility for my team. And last but not least, choice D. I prefer long-term projects over short-term ones. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. And more importantly, you need to decide on what type of considerations you would choose to answer this particular question. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think is that the most important consideration here to answer this question is job relevance. You need to consider the requirements and responsibilities of the role that you're applying for. For example, one differentiation might be individual contributor role versus a leadership role. By doing this differentiation, the describe me the most will identify statements that will demonstrate the good fit for the particular job position. And for describe me the least will provide reasons why based on the position this may not be applicable. And obviously you would need to support the answer with the examples from your past career. Let's look at how you might consider answering this question if you're applying for individual contributor jobs. The individual contributor jobs is where you as individual responsible for the outcomes. Samples of these jobs might be data analyst, research scientist, software engineer, quality assurance specialist, financial analyst, technical writer, graphics designer, and a lot of others. Here the preferential answers would be choices A and D. Let's look at choice A first. Choice A, I should have all the information before making the decision. The statement for individual contributor job suggests the preference for thoughtfulness and careful decision making. In an individual contributor role, it's important to be detailed oriented and make informed decisions based on available information. This trait can be valuable in roles that require precise execution and attention to details. Choice D, I prefer long-term projects over short-term ones, is also preferred for individual contributor roles. This statement indicates a preference for working on the projects that have longer duration. In an individual contributor role, this trait may be beneficial for tasks or projects that require patience, persistence, and focus on long-term goals. It suggests an ability to sustain effort and commitment over the extended periods of times. Now, if you're applying for leadership position, you might consider choosing choices B and C as the ones that would represent you as a candidate for this position. Leadership positions are positions like team lead, project manager, director, vice president, department manager, sales manager, marketing manager, operations managers, human resources manager, and a lot of others. Let's look at both choices B and C individually to see why selecting them might be beneficial when applying for leadership positions. Choice B, I easily communicate with people. This statement highlights strong interpersonal communication skills, which are essential for a leadership position. Effective communication is a crucial for building relationships, conveying information, and motivating and influencing others. Strong communication skills can contribute for successful leadership and collaboration within the team. Choice C, I like to take responsibility for my team, highlights the desire to take ownership and accountability for the success in the team. In a leadership position, the ability to assume responsibility, provide guidance, and support team members is crucial. It indicates a willingness to lead by example, make decisions, 
and make necessary actions to drive team performance and achieve goals. One important point to understand is that I'm not asking you to provide an incorrect answers. I'm asking you to decide how your past experiences can be helpful to the role you're applying for. There is a valid you selected to apply for this particular position. And the reason is because you believe your qualifications are aligned with position description. So what you need to do here, answering this question, you need to align the answers with the job requirements. My three recommendations for you on how to answer these types of questions is provide authenticity, provide self-reflection, and provide supporting examples. Let's look at each one individually to help you decide how to answer this particular question. Let's look at number one, authenticity. You need to provide honest and genuine responses that accurately reflect your personality traits and tendencies. It is essential to be true to yourself and true to your employer rather than trying to present what you think the employer might be looking for. Number two is self-reflection. Take a moment to reflect on your own characteristics and behaviors. Consider your strengths, weaknesses, preferences, and areas where you excel or struggle. And number three, think of the supporting examples. Justify your choices by providing specific examples or instances from your past experience. This helps add credibility to your responses and allows the employer to understand your reasons and thought process. Next, I'm going to share with you my answer if you're applying for the leadership position. And I'm also going to ask you to provide your answer for the individual contributor role. For example, if you're applying for leadership position, I recommend that you choose choice C and choice A. Choice C, I like to take responsibility for my team, would represent the answer that best describes you. Your actual justification for this choice may sound like this. As a leader, I thrive on guiding and supporting my team towards success. I believe that fostering a collaborative and empowering work environment where individuals can grow and excel. Taking responsibility for my team means ensuring their development, providing guidance when needed, and creating a cohesive and motivated group that can achieve outstanding results. The statement that describes you the least might be choice A, and choice A states, I should have all the information needed before making the decision. The justification for the answer might be, while I value the thoughtfulness and informed decision making, as a leader, I understand that time sensitive situations may require making decisions with a limited information. I am comfortable relying on my experience, intuition, and the input of trusted team members to make timely decisions while considering the available information. I'm also open to adjusting decisions as more information becomes available to ensure the best possible outcomes. Now, what do you think the answer should be for the individual contributor role? Please make sure to post your answer, recommendation, and justification in comments of this video so we can all learn. I love this question because it tests candidates' ability to prioritize as well as candidates' leadership skills. You're presented with the question where you need to select two statements. One statement that best describes you and another that describes you the least. The four possible answers to this question would be A. I can organize my work schedule by myself. Choice B. I work even better when everything goes wrong. Choice C. I think small details are important. And last but not least, choice D. I like to be best player on my team. Take a close look to see if you can come up with two answers. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's first look at the important considerations on how you can select the right answer. There are three important considerations here, and they all fall into one category, job relevance. You need to consider the requirements and responsibilities of the role you're applying for. Number two, you need to think about how each statement relates to the demands of the position. And last but not least, number three, you need to choose the statement that demonstrates a good fit for the job and showcases qualities that would be beneficial for the specific context. Let's take a look at how you would select the right answer in the specific categories. Let's start by looking at the choice A. I can organize my work schedule by myself. If you choose this answer, it would show that you are a self-structured person that could work independently. Choice B, I work even better when everything goes wrong, shows your stress tolerance, your ability to work in stressful and unpredictable situations. Choice C, I think small details are important, 
would show your level of attention to details that could be important for jobs such as accounting, programming, controller, and other jobs that require attention to details. And last but not least, choice D, I like to be the best player on my team, shows how competitive you are. This is a good choice for the sales position, but could be a problematic choice for the manager roles. Let's look at the examples of the choices that best describe me. One of the choices that you might select would be choice A. I can organize my work schedule by myself. I am a very disciplined person. I can independently prioritize different tasks and I can take responsibility of the results of my job. I prefer to organize my work schedule by myself without overattention from managers. I can be much more productive by working in this way. This is why I selected the choice A. I can organize my work schedule by myself. Now let's look at the choice that at least describes you and considerations you might consider providing. For that statement, I selected choice D. I like to be the best player on my team. Of course, I want to show off my skills and I want results to be fairly evaluated. But I understand the importance of teamwork for good results. And in this way, I can do a back office job when it's necessary. I will put overall results of my team in the first place, even if it's temporary slows down my own results and my progress. Do you have any other suggestions on how you can answer this type of questions? Please make sure to post them in comments so we can all learn. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and help you to pass any test. If the content was helpful, please click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and when you tell us, we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials. I really appreciate you for your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a YouTube member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.